first question what are these dots okay so recall a little bit we looked at it in the previous chapter 4 where we look at skydiving okay when we have a person falling from the sky some forces act on this person and we often draw this diagram a dot an upwards drag force I'll say this is drag and some downwards gravitational force which is pulling this man down to earth gravity I was right gravity lazy to write the whole thing so the question is what are what are those dots in this case what is this dot right here is that a man's head is that a man's knee is it the, the the body the hand how do you know which part of it that's the question we want to answer today that dot we can say in simple terms is some point on this man's body maybe here perhaps and we say we'll use that point to represent the whole man and then draw forces from there so we have fg and then we have fd okay so the basic idea is in plain english the dot is some point on the man's body but there's a proper term for it let's take a look so for the center of gravity we often use the shortcut name cg because we are lazy to say the whole thing so if you see the word cg it means center of gravity at a levels we want to remember the definition which goes like this center of gravity is the point remember we talk about the dot the point where all the weight of the object can be considered to act so for example if you drew those earlier things like you know the dot and we say oh this is the weight acting on this object that dot is basically the center of gravity and that's what the whole sentence means so remember this picture we looked at uh, earlier from a previous video or the, the one before that this is a picture of a dancer doing a freeze like a pose halfway during dancing take a guess where this person where the center of gravity for this this guy would be where would it be hmm here's some tips I wouldn't say the center of gravity is at his knees. So it's kind of strange. Because center of gravity is the distribution of weight. Most of his weight is not exactly at the knee. And if you think about it, if I choose the knee as the center of gravity, then if I find the torque this way and this way, uh-oh, the clockwise torque is going to be much more. The head, the body, the hands, so no, 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 no. I don't think the center of gravity is over there. What it's, where it likely is, is right here i'm making a guess an educated guess by the way not simply simply guess one huh? so why i guess there is firstly for humans your center of gravity is roughly near your stomach around your stomach area depends people got different people different shape different weight distribution but generally for guys it's somewhere in the stomach maybe a little higher because a lot of guys weight is in the upper body okay the shoulders the chest and the arms and for ladies it's a little lower uh in the stomach area because a lot of the ladies weight is distributed more towards the lower half of the body so in the thighs the legs the hips and so on okay so for this guy probably somewhere here and if i draw an arrow weight it's going to be like that so the weight of this guy is can be said considered to act at that point that one point because and if you check well you check the talk this way and the total talk of all the all the weights here because you know the ear has a weight the head has a weight the neck has a weight the legs has some weight <laughs> if you draw all the weights they all balance out nicely then that is the center of gravity the last reason why i chose that kind of a sneak peek of the equilibrium chapter uh equilibrium section coming next is you notice how this weight line this line of action goes all the way down can't see the hand but the hand is somewhere from here to here this line of action of this weight is within the base support so if he's stable means he won't fall down because his center of gravity is within the base support where you have some i don't know a few maybe normal reaction force to support that weight the same idea goes for other dancers as well if you do dancing or you do sports a lot of what dancing is is the dancer is very aware of their center of gravity okay they may not know it but their body knows it like i said your body actually knows more physics than you by experience you just need to learn how to calculate it you're already living physics 
Now, how do you find this integrity? We look at some ideas, looking at the base. But if you have an object, like let's say a knife. Okay, here's a knife. It's a little blade. If I want to find the center of gravity, I have to just do a little seesaw thing and try to balance it on my finger. I'm trying, I'm trying. Patient, patient. There we go. So once I balance it, I have found the center of gravity, which is right there. Okay? Notice how it's not exactly in the middle. Okay? This side is a little heavier, it's short. This side is longer, but it's lighter. So now I found the center of gravity. Now what? Now what if I open the blade? So I open it. Now it's much longer. If I try to use that same center of gravity to balance it, uh oh, it's not going to balance, it keeps wanting to tilt down. So, from my original, I probably have to move up the blade a little bit, okay, to account for this whole extra weight distribution. So, let's try moving up a little bit. <laughs> nope. Balance. Nope. There we go. Oh, perfectly balanced. Kind of. <laughs> so, now there's a new center of gravity. Ooh. The weight is the same, but the distribution, because I opened this part of the blade up, the distribution is different. So now you have a different center of gravity. So yeah, one way to find object is balance it using torque. Okay. So once it's balanced, means the torque on this side, because of all the weight, 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 is balanced with the weight on this side. Weight, 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 weight. Oh my goodness. I'm scared to drop this because then it will stab my computer down there. <laughs> okay. So just remember, center of gravity depends on distribution of weight. Distribution is important. Let's look at a past question to see how we can do that. First one is a ruler pulley. No, why did I say ruler pulley? That's not a pulley. My apologies. Just a ruler. <laughs> there we go. This is on page 11. If you have the handout and want to try it out as well, you can pause the video and do it ahead of me. But the question goes like this. You have a ruler pivoted at with that triangle thing. A 4 newton weight is suspended causing it to rotate. At the instant when it's horizontal, what is the resultant turning moment about the pivot? So you have the ruler that will start to rotate, but the moment when it's horizontal, they're asking you what is the turning moment. Mm, torque. So let's look at the diagram first. Uh, oh, one important thing I want you to highlight is the word uniform. Uniform meter rule. It basically means the mass is evenly distributed throughout the whole ruler. Okay, it's not like the humans we looked at before. Like if you lie flat on your bed, your head's much heavier than your legs. So depending on where you are, the, the, the mass is not ev evenly distributed. But for rulers, yes, you can assume, especially when they say uniform meter ruler. So if your ruler is 10 cm, 5 cm in the middle is the center of gravity. Okay, so this one, what's going to cause this ruler to turn? Oh, we have a weight hanging there. Mm -hmm. That weight's going to cause a clockwise torque. Torque. That's it. The resultant turning moment. Wait a second. We have weight of the ruler from the center of mass. But where's the center of mass? Uniform. So, you need to remember that. So, if this is a 100 cm ruler, the center of mass will be acting at the 50 cm mark. This is kind of like the lab you all did a uh, couple weeks ago where you're trying to balance the ruler about a triangle wedge. Let's see, how heavy is this thing? The weight is 2 Newton. Okay, so the weight's going to cause an anti-clockwise torque. You want to cause the ruler to turn this way, rotate about the pivot, and you want to find a resultant. Nice. So resultant, this this uh, funny sigma symbol is Greek for resultant or net. The sum of all the torques is, you need to choose a direction, friends. Let's say clockwise is positive. Anti-clockwise is negative torque. Because it direction matters, okay? So, we have, let's do with the clockwise first. 4 newtons times... How far away is that weight from the pivot? Don't say 60. Uh. 60 is the from 0 to 60. No, no, no. 
We only want from 60 to 100. That's the distance. So we do 4 times 40 cm, which is 0 0.4 meters. Minus, well, plus minus the other side, so the, the, the center of gravity. Let's label it COG or CG. Nah, never mind, I wrote the, the O already. Center of gravity. That one will be 2 newtons times, not 50 again, this distance between 50 and 60, so that's 10 cm, so 0 0.1 meters. What do we get here? Resultant torque. 4 times 0 0.4 minus 2 times 0 0.1. So we get 1.4 newton meters for this case. Okay, a quick refresher or reminder is this is clockwise torque. This is the anti-clockwise torque. If you define your signs differently, like your positive and negative are different, you will still get 1.4 just with a negative, which will tell you which direction it is. So for me, I said clockwise is positive. So this positive 1.5 basically means clockwise. It's going to uh, have a net torque that is clockwise. So in the end, the whole ruler will still swing down. So that's the ruler question.